Hi there, I'm Ludwig. This is SQL Bootcamp Online, the two-minute SQL series when I'm addressing the most common questions and issues regarding SQL Server and Azure. Now, in the previous episode of this little YouTube channel of mine, I've addressed the question on how to check the SQL Server startup time how to check the startup time of your SQL Server instance. Now, the thing is that in very many occasions, we're not looking for the actual start time, the startup time, we're looking for the actual uptime. So this is the question I want to address today as a follow up to the previous video. I hope you've seen that video already if you're subscribed to this YouTube channel. So if you didn't just do this right now, once I'm loading my little screen sharing here. So I do have my London SQL Server. I have no idea when it started up. I don't know how this SQL Server was booted. So of course I could use one of those methods in here. Boom, that would show me the creation date of the uh, tempdb file. I should see the uh, process ID uh, one. So again, that would be my login time of the system process or maybe the SQL Server start time. Boom, I need to select the proper part of my code and that's it, right? So I do get the actual date in here. But how do I check the uptime? Well, obviously the uptime is nothing more than the date difference between right now and this date that you've seen uh, that you've uh, that you're seeing based on your code, right? So let's use this OSS info dynamic management view and do exactly that. Well, we do have the get date function in SQL Server, right? I can select my get date, which will without any additional arguments, which will just give me the actual date that is um, active right now. So what I want to do is I want to calculate the date difference between those two. And this is exactly what I'll do. I do have this start time, I will have my get date. Get date, come on in here. Boom. From these two, Tadam, I have those two dates, one next to the other. And what I want to do is I want to apply a function called date difference, date diff, just like that. Now, I will have to provide one additional thing. I need to provide, you, provide SQL Server with the interval that I want to use, the measure, the units that I want to use in order to explain and express that difference between those two uh, those two dates. Now, in my case, I'll just start with a date. Boom. I'll just use the DD in here. Of course, I need to close my parentheses at the end. ta -da. I'll just start the new line so you can see the entire code in here and select the entire thing. Boom. You can see that in expressed in days, this SQL server is running for 13 days right now. If I wanted to use hours, whoops, not like this, but I wanted to use my hours in here. ta -da. Execute. I'll see that these, this is 315 hours. Now, of course, depending on your uh, depending on your situation, you can turn it to months, you can turn it to years even, and it'll always provide you with the actual information. Uh, that will always be precise because this code is bullet proof. It, will, it does not refer to any particular point in time that you're hard coding in. You are just referring to the get date will changes every single minute. So this is the answer to the, today's question, how to check your SQL Server uptime by just applying the date difference function on the code that you already know based on the previous episodes of this uh, of this YouTube channel. So again, I'm Ludwig. This is SQL Bootcamp Online. All of the pieces of code are uh, listed down below on our GitHub repository. I hope you are already subscribed to this channel, but do not trust YouTube's algorithm. Just go to SQL Bootcamp Online, sign up for my mailing list so I can shoot you an email. The next episode will be up. See you on the other side.